playing in the itchy fiberglass, Tim. Itchy fiberglass? Itchy, a bit, it, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're working on the grill surround. When this car came in, it already had a custom fiberglass grill surround. We're trying to reuse as much of it as we can. Scott already came in and made the whole top middle section out of metal so it would flow better with his engine bay. So I cut that out. I gotta tie the fender pieces back in and then we gotta make a whole filler piece to close out under the grill. We're gonna remake it all out of fiberglass. modifications to it to be able to tuck the bumper and a few other things. So I am re-fiberglassing it back together. While I'm doing this, all I can do is remember Dale Lewis who taught me all I need to know about fiberglass. It's all for you, Dale. Do it for Dale. Do it for Dale. So what I did is I shaped the front here, and I have to add to the back, so I'm kind of making the plane that I want it at that goes right under the grill. So uh, when I do the top side, I'll, it'll set up, then I'll flip it over, and I'll peel all this tape out of the bottom side and grind back, and then lay one to solidify the bottom side. But this is the height that I want it underneath of the grill on the car, so I want to make sure to, you know, and there's a little bit of gap down here, so I'm laying the tape across to get a nice flat surface. It'll be a little irregular, but when I say in the bottom side, it'll be nice and flat. Can't take you guys anywhere. It's boys night pride. Dust, the dust bunnies in here. So the next step is to uh, lay fiberglass across the top of this. I've got my uh, my form made here out of aluminum tape to get the uh, flat portion that returns underneath of the grill and the headlight doors. Uh, so I've plotted that out. I need to raise this just a little bit more so I'll, I'm going to go ahead and lay fiberglass across the top and then I'll put it on the car so it cures in the correct shape and after it cures I'll flip it over and uh, clean off the bottom side which will have all the tape and everything on it and then lay one to maybe two layers of fiberglass just to solidify the bottom side and then it'll be the exact shape we need it'll go underneath the grill in the headlight doors and we've got a nice return here that's gapped to the top of the bumper that Scott made. And then we'll just have to finish the uh, corners of the fenders. And we'll be in great shape.
what I'm making here is, so I've got the, uh, I've got the grill surround made, ready to tuck in there, i got to trim the back line, make that fit a little bit better, but I've got my, uh, the headlight trim bolted in place, I didn't have it in place when I fabricated it, just so it wouldn't get all messy with resin and everything, but now I need to make sure that my piece will fit it, and so I have to make a, a nice little gap here on my piece to the existing trim. So basically what I'm doing is just taking, starting with cardboard and I'll uh, and I'll basically just get my rough shape of the headlight trim there and I'm close, it doesn't have to be exact, but then I will transfer this to the back of my grill surround and trim that and then when I put it up in here it'll have a nice little little gap to the to the headlight trim. Nice. That'll be tidy. Make sure it's good. Right. It'll be right under there. That's that'll be about the gap I have on my piece. Nice little gap there. And then whenever we pull it up it'll be a nice little gap to the headlight piece. We are going to be making a uh, one-piece fiberglass headliner uh, support structure and we're going to be making that by using the exterior roof. So I'm going to go ahead and tape over the uh, quarter seam here and kind of make a dam here and we're just going to use the roof as a mold. I will lay the fiberglass over the entire roof, pop it off. We'll probably have to section it and narrow it a little bit, but then put it back together. But we'll be able to size a headliner with a perfect crown of the roof and just move it to the inside. So we'll have that all in one piece of fiberglass before too long. Like I said, I'll get started on taping out my form and we'll get going. How's your mold coming along? Moldy. Moldy? Yep. Laying about a thousand pieces of aluminum tape. But it'll get the job done. So I'm just trimming the layers now. So this is, what is this, a four foot wide roll? It's 50, 58 inches wide. 60, so it is a five foot roll. So we got a five foot roll, which is wider than the roof. So I'm gonna cut a piece to lay up there. I'll trim it to fit the uh, sail panel, the down the seat, uh, the seat pillar. And I'll probably cut three layers for the overall, but then I'll strengthen up the sides and around the, uh, the uh, package tray and around the rear window and front window, because that's where we're going to be mounting it. So I'll, I'll put maybe an additional two or three layers there. So overall it'll be three in the center, five on the edges to really strengthen it up. And after it sets up, we will have to narrow it. We'll have to section it and narrow it by about two inches. That shouldn't be a big deal. But like I said, right now I'm just cutting out my pieces. My biggest table is four foot, so I gotta kind of overlap. Four foot. Good way to do this and keep it straight.
once you find the measurement, a too far. If you take and grab the side of this, so, now it's tearing on me. But what it does is it, it tightens the strand in a straight line across the whole piece. And that way you don't have to mark on it. You've got a straight line. It's, it's not doing it very well, though. Probably because it's so fucking wide. It's tearing at it. Yeah, a little bit. But... Yeah, that's usually the way I would do that. Like on a smaller piece, it works freaking great. Like you just pull the strand out of the entire thing and then you've got a channel to cut that's straight. Yeah. That's a pretty big piece. Yeah, we're gonna have to do it the old fashioned way and just ride a line. So you cut them into little squares now? So, uh, <laughs> this is for uh, the little like supports because around the side, I cut the ribs already. I've got the three ribs going. Uh, this is for just like patchwork around the sides to strengthen up the edges. Uh, so, Laura will have something to mount to. So, just cut it in small strips like this because it's easier to place around the whole thing instead of cutting one big long piece. It's it's easier just to have a stack of, you know, three inch wide little pieces and there's a kid no way. So are we making this as just a support so Laura has something to like wrap? Yeah, so Laura will end up wrapping this and this will be the headliner. Gotcha. You know, she'll be able to like lay a pattern on it or something and make ribs out of on a certain things because it, you know, you can glue to it, you can... So tell me again real quick why you wax on the roof. Because uh, we don't want it to stick to the roof. So yeah, I'm just putting uh, an old heavy bodied Carnuba wax down just as a base layer. Uh, we don't want it to stick to the roof, like I said. I also have mold release agents, uh, like a spray that I'm going to put along all my edges just to kind of fill that gap between the, between the tape and everything. Just to make sure nothing sticks and we're able to remove what I put on, remove that. Because, like I said, that's the headliner we're going to go underneath with, but we just want this perfect crown of the exterior. So, got to make sure it won't stick. You just rub some Crisco on it? Yeah, basically, essentially Crisco would be the same thing. You could use Crisco. You just want something that ain't going to... Everything above this Whatever lube your favorite lube is. Is, is not going to stick. Yeah. And you can be probably use like a little bit of motor oil or something. Eat anything really, yeah. anything that's gonna stay put and not cause, you know, like this is some Pam. When I put the, <laughs> the resin onto this, it's not gonna make it do anything weird. Yeah. You know, it's it's thick to be heavy, but it's not so thick it's gonna cause weird, you know, shapes and stuff in the in the headliner itself.
paint on there? Uh, this is uh, resin to harden fiberglass. It's a two-part epoxy resin. We like to use the West system with slow reducer on hot days like today. And right now we're just filling the roof seam. So that way when we lay everything over, we got enough material to grind back to a flat surface on the inside. So. How long does it take for all this to harden? 24 hours. Oh, okay. To be fully cured, yeah. So you leave it on overnight, pop it off in the morning? Yeah, that's what makes it tricky is doing shit on Which I didn't even think about. We probably could have got a slow. I we think they make one slower. slower. Oh, we do have a slower? Okay. I mean, I guess if you want to talk into this guy and pull a cup and start, start helping. I know just enough to get myself in trouble. Getting the bubbles out of vinyl. Oh yeah. It's gonna be firm, firm but gentle. Now you're all sticky. Yeah. The next day, we have skinned the roof of the charger uh, to create the backer for the headliner material, and we've got our initial lay. And it's still a little too flimsy, so what we've decided to do is add foam rib. So I have cut all the foam ribs over here, and we are about to place those. I figured ribs every 8 to 10 inches will help uh, the, the rigidity from sagging under the weight of the leather and the uh, adhesive once it gets put in. So let's put some ribs on. Chili baby butt ribs. too far on your side. I'm gonna lay the one runner right there. So 
something this strong. Is it, is it a lot stronger now? Yeah. Now it actually holds the shape. Oh, yeah. So. Those ribs helped out a lot. Oh, yeah. And now we'll be able to uh, trim it and fit it on the inside today, like we wanted to the other day. So I'm pretty happy with it. Came out pretty smooth. I'll have to resell some of the part portions that got broken when we were chipping it off, but other than that, it stayed pretty smooth inside. Good enough to wrap with leather, you know? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Just going through and blocking off the places where it went through. What? I'm just going off and uh, blocking the inside, the places where it's seeped through. Put a little guy coat on there, block those little nibs off, and then the bottom will be flat. But it went through a couple places right through here, you know. Fiberglass is porous, so. Then take off the tape line around the, the side there. So it's nice and smooth. Everything's made and uh, set up. I've got the ribs in. Uh, I have went ahead and drawn a center line, and now I've measured off the center line, and I have two lines on each side that I'm going to cut. That way I can use this piece to go inside, and I'm not losing my center crown. And then I'll take uh, the two inches that I need to narrow out of the shoulder. That way, like I said, it'll have this nice uniform crown instead of having a seam in the middle of the... Uh, in the middle of the headliner, so I got those three lines drawn, and we just go ahead and cut it off. All right, so now that it's cut, I'll go ahead and locate the centerpiece up in there. I have uh, hard mounts for each corner. The visors will come in. Uh, the rear view mirror is located. I don't know if we're gonna keep the dome light. And then at the back, it's got the original wood staple blocks in the sail cam, so we'll mount it back there. And then I'm going to laminate uh, magnets in across where the the cross supports are in the underside of the roof, so this will just magnet up in there. It'll hard mount at the front, hard mount at the back, and that'll be great. Then, I, then, I'll just, then it's just figuring out how to uh, fit the uh, sides. Figure out how to what? How to fit the sides. Like, like I said, this is where the... I, I know I need to narrow it, so the two inches that I'm going to need to take out are going to be in here, so I'll have to you know, kind of bring it in and but I gotta get this mounted in there before I can find my edges. So, a little bit of work to do on that. Now that I've cut it, it's a little bit more flimsy because it doesn't have the bag.
Yeah, the back, your, uh, take the back huh? this way. Go take back. the back towards the driver's side. There you go, right, right about there. Go okay. back. Should be good there. All right. Cool. That's about where I need to be. Screw it up in there. Uh, not yet. I gotta. I'm gonna clean it. My goal was to come right across to the shoulder here, and then like my new seam, because I've cut them into three pieces, uh, to narrow it, make that seam right there, and it ended up right, right where I needed to. I'm not too close to these, so I have to stack the magnet a little bit, then I'm going to laminate the back side of the headliner. But it looks like it'll contact great up here, so I just kind of got to get it up in there and decide uh, on a home. But yeah, I want to block the edges of that to make it flat real quick, and then I'll get some clamps so I can get it up in there, and a drill, and start making her home. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more build videos like this, help us out by liking, commenting, and subscribing to our channel. And it's a little thing to do, but don't forget to turn on those notifications. If you want to buy merch, go to store.classiccarstudio.com. See you next time.